Today we're doing something fun. We're talking about Digimon. Digimon, Digital Monsters, Digimon are the champions. Specifically, we'll be talking about Digimon the movie and how it talks about the internet. Because if you were lucky enough to be born in that sweet spot between the end of the Cold War and the beginning of the War on Terror, you will remember a time when the internet was cool. It was a place of hope and excitement, and Digimon shows us how. Perhaps we can get that back. So strap in and hold on to your juice boxes, because I'm about to take you on a journey into the internet. So recently I rewatched the Digimon movie, and it reminded me of something. I hadn't watched this movie in over a decade, and before that, I had watched it originally as a child. And what I I remembered was the hope and excitement for the digital future. We forget this fact nowadays, but once upon a time, the internet used to be cool. Before it was a tool for manipulating opinions and destroying reality, it used to be this place of potential, expression, and possibility. I'm sure you've heard a bunch of nostalgia YouTubers saying all this stuff before, but if you lived through it, you know it's true. And the chopped up mess that is the Digimon movie as it was released in America talks about that fact in a metaphorical way. It shows us the real strengths of the internet and its potential. It talks about connection and the power of being human. And it's funny, in an age where we are fearing our lack of purpose because of an impending AI doomsday, it's really good to go back and relearn all the things that this movie talks about, because pretty soon our humanity will be all that matters to us. But before we continue, please consider hitting that subscribe button. I'd like to just take a moment to ask, if you like videos like this one, please consider subscribing to the channel. Every little bit helps. You can like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, your choice. But anyway, let's get back to the video. So to summarize real quick, the Digimon franchise in America started with a bunch of kids going to summer camp and getting sucked into another world, the digital world, where they meet their digital partners, or Digimon, and become digidestined. They learn that they have been called there to help save the digital world from various threats. There is Ty, the ever-obnoxious alpha male as a tween, Matt, the cool loner, and also my favorite, and Sora, the main female and sort of love interest for Ty, but also perpetually ticked at him because he's a doofus, Izzy, the technical genius, Mimi, the girly girl as she would have been called at that time, Joe, the would-be doctor, and TK and Kari, Matt and Ty's siblings respectively. Their Digimon are as follows. Agumon! Tentomon! Who else is there? Together, they go on to defend the digital world against the evil dark masters, some bad Digimon that threaten the harmony of the digital world. In season two, the original gang is all grown up, and the next round of kids act as continuations of the archetypes of children introduced in the first season. Davis is a Ty type of leader, Cody is a bit like Joe and Izzy, and Yoli is definitely a Mimi type. To round out the team and connect them to the older generation, TK and Kari are also introduced, but more grown up. The movie is based around all of these characters and their adventures on the internet and the real world. It's important to understand both the metaphor and reality here. The metaphor being that the Digimon represent the internet and the Digidestined represent humanity. The bond between the two represents what makes the internet run, but in reality, it's a TV show about kids with special pets. But Digimon is more than just a children's franchise from the recent past. It's a window into humanity's ideas about the early internet. So we'll tell Jedi to upload Gabumon and Potamon onto the net! You can do that? That sounds like fun. Usually I just play solitaire on that thing, but I... Careful, boy! You almost cut my ear off! Cats today are so smart, aren't they? I still can't set the time on my VCR! We are numb to the internet nowadays. What was once an exciting novelty has become mundane, but also somehow evil. Yet looking back at the series, we can see how excited we all were once upon a time. How hopeful, and maybe we can find our way back to some of that hope and love that the internet began with. At that time, people still had value. Emotions and connection were important, and authentic weirdness of the internet was encouraged. It was a place to be yourself in a real way. Although, just to add a quick note here, it could be a bit dangerous because there weren't restrictions in place the way that there are today, but we're not going to focus on that here. The internet of today is not the internet of that time. It's become everything that the early founders and innovators of the time would not have wanted, but we'll get to that later. Let's talk first about how Digimon showcases the dreams of the internet. The internet became available for commercial use in the 90s, and the Digimon series started around that same time. In a way, one could even argue that the Digidestined refer to millennials, kids who were unique in that they grew up with the internet in a way that no other generation before them had. This franchise highlights the importance of connection among people as what really runs the internet. People were truly important, not metal and wires. It was about all of us coming together to build, protect, create, and connect the internet, Digidestined, and other humans. It's funny as I say this, because when I was a kid, I used to wonder, why did these amazing, larger-than-life monsters need a bunch of kids to help them fight? Why couldn't they evolve on their own into their final forms? But I see now 
now that it was about the emotions, the bonds that these kids had with these monsters that gave them that power. The Digimon can't fight without us, and humans need friends because we're lonely. Being Digidestined brings these kids together for their whole youth, as we later learn. And there was a trope at this time of kids who were lonely, finding otherworldly companionship. We need emotional connections, love, and bonds, something that the Digimon seem to feed on. It's what holds the team together. That's what used to hold the internet together, and in many ways, it still does. If we didn't want to connect with other humans and the rest of the world, we probably wouldn't check social media anymore or the news. In the Digimon series, and especially the movie, there are moments where the digital world and the internet is being disrupted by an evil Digimon or person, and it can affect the real world as a result. Some still believe that the digital world is something separate from real life, and we forget that actions on the internet have real-world consequences. This was most true in the Digimon Movie 2000, in which a rogue Digimon, possessed by a computer virus, starts eating data and destroying the real world, causing mass panic, crashing the stock market, shopping systems, and launching nuclear missiles. There is such an emphasis here on connection, and on the power of connection globally to save us all. I think it's why it's challenging these days to be politically isolationist, at least for young people. In the movie, kids globally watch as the possessed Digimon, Inframon, attacks everything and the Digidestined fight back. They are transfixed to their computers, regardless of their location. Threats like a virus-possessed Digimon eating data and wreaking havoc on the real world can make people feel very connected because the connection of the internet makes every threat a global threat. In fact, in the movie, after their Digimon are attacked and injured, Tai and Matt become digital themselves. Their bond and connection with their Digimon are so strong, they somehow go into the internet from their screens. Listen, I don't have a whistle to wake you, but I want you to know you're not alone. And the mail keeps coming. It won't stop. Kids from all over the world are writing to you. They need your help. You're the only one who can do it. Feel their hope. Feel their strength. <laughs> I feel. It's not real. Obviously, it's animated, but it's a metaphor for how strong bonds can be regardless of geographical location. No matter where you or I are, we can all be there to support each other. In modern times, it's common to uproot one's life for digital relationships, and for young people especially, the digital world has very real consequences. But back then, it was a novel idea. Tai is able to awaken his metal Greymon when he reminds him of what is at stake, of all the kids who need him. It showcases how much power we have as a collective. The digital world, the Digimon in this movie, run on the emotions of human children. In reality, and even today, this is so true. The code might build the world and the structures on which we experience the internet, but truly, our feelings and thoughts run the internet. Our values, hopes, and dreams, and everything that makes humans human is what makes the internet run. Without us, it would just be a series of machines and wires. Even AI is taught by us. It might not feel like it today, but back then, the internet was a very human place. Because we were part of a collective, and nothing was more valuable than that. Our our actions and feelings were the internet. It was not about serving computers like it is these days. In the final Digimon movie, released around 2020, the end cap to this series, Tai and the gang are older. He's in college and working at one of those large multi-floor arcades in Tokyo. The story is less about tech being useful and more about serving these large machines that need human interaction. People give up their time willingly for dopamine. And this plays into the second point here, that humans have value. Our emotions and connections run the internet even today, but somehow a machine's ability to run endlessly and work forever has made us feel inferior. We all feel, subconsciously, that we need to serve the machines now. We must train AI because it's better than us. It can do everything better. But back then, we saw the internet as a tool for the future and for better things. There was a certain kind of healthy entitlement. The internet was the next frontier and anyone could make it. There was a belief that humans were the pinnacle of achievement, that we could do great things for each other, that the net was would help us to help each other, not be the next rung of human evolution. The Digidestined fought with their monsters, not as their slaves. In the second season, when Ken, one of the Digidestined, goes rogue and decides to become an emperor in the digital world and enslave the Digimon into his personal empire, the rest of the Digidestined work tirelessly to stop him and free them, because the internet is not a place to be exploited for personal gain. That was the moral value that humans brought to the table. Digimon were their friends, with each character willing to die and give everything for their partners. Humans were not obsolete elite, but integral to the growth of this new technology. This made the early internet a weird and fascinating place. It was messy and badly built. We can see it in the anime style from the first series and the movie. But in the last movie, everything is clean and perfect. Instead of Izzy's small laptop connected to Ty's dad's messy computer on the floor, we get to see Izzy's office with three large monitors. Rather than the mess of books and CDs everywhere, we get an immaculately clean space. It speaks to the difference of the world. Not a space for authentic expression and mess, but a place where only perfection exists. 
exists. The early internet, as showcased here by Halt and Catch Fire, was beyond strange. If you haven't heard of it, this is another great TV show about the early days of the internet. Human experimentation and strangeness were encouraged and enjoyed, because humans had value simply for being how they were, especially on the internet. In fact, if you weren't valued in your life at the time, in the real world, more than likely, the internet was the place where you could find value and community. This clip from Halt and Catch Fire talks about that. Well, when I first looked at the internet, I thought it was pretty boring. Was but then I found all this other stuff, like this kid Justin was writing about his life, and this other girl was obsessed with I Love Lucy. And what about that was so appealing? I don't know. Um, school was not good. Everyone's always pretending, you know? That's why the web's so great, because no one pretends. You just put it out there who you really are. And if people respond to it, that's great. But if not, who cares? At least they saw you and not just some projection, you know? And she's right, there were blogs and websites about odd niche topics, not the perfection of Instagram like today. Life wasn't about making oneself clean and perfect like technology, but about authentically expressing one's inner voice. In the original Digimon movie, it took an intense connection for the kids to be able to enter the internet. But in the last movie, they are able to enter it with ease. In the past, they were unprepared for threats, but this time they set out to handle their threat with a full plan and organization. It speaks to what has been lost, the room for experimentation, but also the gratitude for this fascinating technology that has changed humanity forever. We take it for granted and use it to make endless money, corrupting reality as we do it. The final film of this series is heartbreaking, as the original Digidestined learned that they are doomed to lose their Digimon as they grow up and lose their potential. It is all about the loss of youth with time, the loss of potential with age, but also the loss of the potential of the internet. The villain of the last film is a Digidestined who couldn't handle growing up and losing her Digimon, so she decides to trap herself and the Digidestined and all of their Digimon in the digital world in a Neverland-type state, where they can remain young forever. But much like we can't have the internet of that time back, we can't have our youth back. But we can learn from it. We can do better here. In life, we can never go backwards. If we're 20, we can't be 10 again. But we can learn and do better in our lives by wondering what that person might think of us now. Would they be proud of us? Would the early innovators of the internet at that time be impressed with what we have done now? Would that child browsing the internet and playing flash games or reading articles online be excited by the internet of today? These are the questions that can help us to go back and bring some of those good things back to this space that now dominates our world. Matt and Ty and everyone else is heartbroken at the prospect of losing their Digimon, but they recognize right from wrong, and staying trapped in the memory of the past is wrong. And even in the new world of ubiquitous technology and the messed up internet, they know what's right, and disrupting the natural human aging process is wrong. This morality is the value of humans, just being good and knowing right from wrong innately. Technology is always meant to be a tool not the be-all end-all. They don't want to become imprisoned in the digital world or part of a machine. They know that they must grow up, live their lives, and their Digimon are proud of them for doing so, despite the pain of being apart. Digimon shows us how we loved and built the internet back before the age of billionaires, AI, and absurd tech companies. We lived and loved over the connection of a phone line, believing that the connection would bring us closer together. We believed that the will of the people and democracy would flourish as a result. Our thoughts and feelings had value, so we came together as a collective and experimented with strange websites and blogs and movements. We were valuable, not the computers. The tool was a means to build a more equitable, just, and moral world, much like the Digidestined themselves, always saving the world and helping others, even in the end, when it costs them their Digimon. The key to going back to that time is just as simple as seeing humans as valuable again, to look back at that time and wonder if they would be proud of this internet that we all have created. But all of that is much easier said than done, especially these days. Thank you so much for watching, and for those of you who have stayed to the end, I'm so grateful for all who have subscribed and commented. If you like content like this, I recently did a video on Three Body Problem and how it talks about humanity's destructive impulses. If you want something a little more hopeful, I did a video talking about the Tom Hanks movie, The Terminal, and how to survive in a difficult situation. I hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you soon. Bye!